The Packers have played their four quarters. Now it's time for the fifth quarter. 29 hours ago, <laughs> Packers kicked off against the Arizona Cardinals. 29 hours ago. And what a 29 hours. I think I've been working for 26 of them. But uh, things happen when you lose in the fashion they lost yesterday, 20-17 to 17, to a moribund franchise, making the Packers look even more moribund in the eyes of President and CEO Mark Murphy, who lowered the boom, dropped the other shoe, wielded the axe, however you want to say it. Mike McCarthy fired as head coach of the Packers. And no bulletin there, but... It's going to give us plenty to talk about. We're going to compress the last 29 hours into less than one hour tonight and get you up to speed on everything that has gone on. This show started way back in 1980 in the midst of the Bart Starr era. I've been around for Starr, Greg, Infante, Holmgren, Rhodes, Sherman, and now McCarthy. And this is the first time we've ever talked about a coaching change on this show because they always happened after the last game of the season. The only other time a Packer coach departed before a season ended was Gene Ronzani back in 53. No, I wasn't around covering the team then. But he quit Are when you they were sure? two, when they quit he quit when they were 2-7 and 1 before the team ended their season with their annual trip out to LA and San Francisco. Uh, Lyle Blackburn and Hugh DeBoer co-coached the team and they went 0 and 2. Lyle took over. That was a mess and on and on it went. Scooter McLean, he didn't even get fired in season going 1-10 and 1, but after that they found another coach in one Vincent Thomas Lombardi. And now Mr. Murphy, you have got a lot of heat on you to get this right for McCarthy say what you will and granted it had probably gone stale and the fans had railed against him guy done good Mike you done good a Super Bowl title six division championships nine playoff seasons a franchise record eight in a row 135 wins only Curly Lambo with more and out he goes with four shy of a 13th season lots to get to we heard from Murphy today we heard from interim head coach Joe Philbin today. Got back into the locker room late this afternoon. You're going to hear from players, including the one wearing the black hat around town these days. And that's the birthday boy, Aaron Rodgers. And hear what he had to say about everything. And to help us sort through it tonight, unfortunately, will not be Bashad Breeland, for he came up to me when the meetings ended today and said, <laughs> no way. Am I coming on to try and talk about a coach getting fired and I'm brand new to this team and I don't even know half the guys in the locker room yet and I didn't even play yesterday. So I said, Bashad, you're good. I think we got plenty to talk about. We'll try and get him on later. Matt Z's along, though. Hello, Matt. Uh, so, uh, so to be clear. Yes. We're not going to spend the hour talking about Sir Paul McCartney coming to Lambeau next year. Was he in a band before Wings? That would have been the big, big news yesterday. <laughs> But we're not going to spend Actually, that. they're announcing that tomorrow. Yeah, it's announced. Official. Yes. But anyway. So I'm... I did show prep for nothing tonight, uh, is what you're telling no, me. No, you, you've been watching this thing <laughs> unravel all season long. We knew and... this was going to happen well, at the end yeah, of the year, no, right? I'm, I'm very surprised that Mark Murphy had the oomph to do it yesterday yeah. uh, with four to go. A lot of criticism uh, about the timing. Tony Dungy, most vociferously on NBC, saying uh, it's a disservice to a guy that has brought so much to this community. And he may have a point there. But I think while Mike was very stunned by the decision, sure. I think he has already come to the realization that it was going to happen. And all right, I can decompress before Christmas, get the family life back in order, and then figure out what he wants to do. He is going to be on everybody's NFL opening list once the season comes to an end anyway, if he wants to coach. And I'm not convinced he wouldn't take a year off. He's going to get paid for next year anyway. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, specifically back to what Tony Dungy was saying on Football Night in America on NBC, talking about firing a guy with a month to go. He's won you a Super Bowl. He's won you a lot of games, which is all very true. And as you pointed out, he was an excellent head coach for this franchise. He absolutely was. Did he lose the team? It certainly lost. It looked like it, right? I mean, it certainly looked like his message well, it wasn't had working. fallen it, flat. Well, yeah, and, and, but I think it's more of a disservice to him and to that locker room if for a month everybody knows he's a lame duck coach and you make them show up every day. Yeah. You run them through the motions. Yeah, and all, it would have been, tor it been to torturous because we would have been it. asking McCarthy yeah. every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday when he has yeah. press conferences, what about your future? You're worried about your – we're going to be asking players every week, well, if it doesn't happen this week, what is it, what's going to happen next? It would have been brutal. Uh, it's, and, and that 
relieved a lot of pressure. There's no question Absolutely. about that. But now I'm very curious, and we'll get into this later, how this team will function and perform in the final month of the season. Let's just go back to the game, and we'll start there, and then we'll work our way into all the events that took place today. The Cardinals, are you kidding me? 20 to 17. Maybe the Packers aren't better than the Cardinals. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Maybe, Maybe they're everyone not. just believes that they are, and they're just not. <sighs> well, let's, well, we all know how that thing unfolded yesterday in the snow and the wind at Lambeau, but in the postgame locker rooms, it was Mike McCarthy who opened up what turned out to be his final press conference as head coach. Well, stating the obvious, uh, that was clearly a very disappointing loss. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a game that we needed to win. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're all disappointed. Uh, I did not do a good enough job. Uh, we, we didn't do as good enough job as a football team. No, they didn't. And the guys didn't, as a team, do a good enough job either. They got out to the 7 nothing lead on the Adams catch, so that was a beauty. 10-7 at the half. And then the third quarter came around, and again, third down misfortunes and all kinds of things. Cardinals take advantage. They hit a couple big plays, push out in front. Packers get it even. And then Arizona gets the late field goal. Packers miss at the gun. Aaron Rodgers and the Pack were two touchdown favorites in December at Lambeau. Well, it's just frustrating. Um, this was a game that we, that we have won in the past, expected to win, and teams that want any shot of uh, having some postseason uh, success got to win these games. Uh, dome team, 35 degrees, snow, you know, wind is playing right in our hands, and we just uh, came out flat. I feel like the energy was a little bit flat. You know, we just didn't, uh, didn't play very well. You know, see, that's the biggest upset at Lambeau or at home for the Packers since 67, when they were reigning champions of the NFL. Super Bowl hadn't been played yet. Uh, oh, no, it was. I mean, the first Super Bowl champions. Uh, they were 20-point favorites and lost 10-7 to to the Vikings at County Stadium. It's been that long. Any given Sunday, right? Only the second time Rodgers has lost a December game at home that he started. Unbelievable. Yeah, and this is just not a good team right now. No, it's now. not. It's not. And despite all that spotty play, Mason Crosby still had a shot to send it to overtime, but wide right from 49 at the gun. Wind was swirling, so uh, you know, hit a ball uh, on the right side, and nothing, all pregame, everything, everything moved right to left. So you know, that one to go right, I was, uh, I was pretty shocked about and uh, obviously disappointed. Didn't do the job. Pushed it a little right. Out she goes, and that was that. Tremont Williams, veteran I respect an awful lot, as you know. Never saw 4-7-1 and one coming. You know, obviously when we, when we started the season, uh, we didn't think we would be in this, you know, in this hole, but we are. And all we can do is continue to play now. Um, you know, the future is not looking very bright right now. You know, we just lost a game. It's tough, you know, with the slight chance that we did have. You know, we would have hoped to get this one, but this one here hurts. A lot. Not as much for you as for the boss. Right. Yeah, no absolutely. question about it. And back to McCarthy, who had to see the handwriting on the wall, even, he, even though he was still heading into the media auditorium with a job. I've never been in this spot, and I'm not going to act like I, I know what the hell I'm going to do tomorrow when, when, <laughs> they, when they get in here. So... We're going to do what we always do. We're going to represent the Packers the right way. I, I know that. So other than that, we'll, we'll focus on what's in front of us. That's unbelievable foreshadowing there. It, I mean, yeah. because it didn't happen until about an hour after that. Uh, for while this was all going on, we'll get to the details uh, of the meeting between Murphy, Gutenkunst, and making the decision uh, that Murphy ultimately did. One more from the QB, who uh, after the game asked about the future with the new head coach as this was before the future became now. It's really not something I'm thinking about in this moment right now. It is my birthday, so I've got a lot of people in town that I'm looking forward to getting back to. But um, it's disappointing. We've won so many games in a row in December, home games, against good teams and against teams like this who we should beat uh, every single time. So that is that part is frustrating, especially when you think about you know, wanting to be a playoff team and feeling like there is, or there was, you know, a great deal of hope this week during the week of preparation. And it'll now be Joe Philbin preparing the team for the Atlanta Falcons coming to town on Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the team responds. I mean, if they come out, new energy, 
new focus, new intensity, then maybe you just didn't need a change at the top. Or then I suppose the narrative could be you really did give up on Mike McCarthy and you were just waiting for If Rodgers goes a lights out and goes, voice. let's say, 27 to 30 for 350 right? and four on Sunday, then I'm really going to start to wonder. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to watch for sure because you do have a month of football and these guys are professionals. They're alpha males. They're all competitors. You better go out on Sunday with that's fire in your word, belly and and play hard because the future of just about everyone on that roster not to mention the entire coaching staff is in limbo right now absolutely uh, and so uh they mike are... mccarthy won't be the only big name that's gone from this team oh i can guarantee you that i mean it just won't be there's there's going to be several well known guys, big franchises who names. make even more money than mccarthy yes. are going to be gone from it's this going team. to happen so, hours after the game, uh, Mark Murphy made the decision. The press release came out at 6 o'clock. I was just about ready to go home and take a little rest before cover two <laughs> on Channel 2 last night. I'm finishing up work, okay? And then the inbox, I thought I'd check it one more time. Kaboom! The bomb goes off, and that sent off, uh, obviously, massive coverage at all our radio stations and online, and I started writing blogs, started calling players I know, seeing if I can get some reaction, trying to figure out what they thought of this whole thing. I got a hold of two guys, did not want to go on the record. The rest I had to leave messages for. One said, crazy that it happened now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was just a scramble night last night, obviously. The statement released uh, by Mark Murphy, you know, read in part, uh, it, the season has not lived up to the expectations and standards of the Packers. As a result, I made the difficult decision to relieve Mike McCarthy of his role as head coach effective immediately. He's been a terrific coach and leader of the Packers for 13 years. Hearing we great deal of success on and off the field. I want to thank Mike, his wife Jessica, and the rest of the McCarthy family for all that they have done for the Packers and they will begin the search immediately. So that was the formality of it all. And it was an ugly performance. And, you know, Mark Murphy's saying that that last performance, really ugly, that kind of just made this a no-doubt move yeah. at this point. I don't, yeah, I don't it just didn't anything. look like the team was in it. So I guess now the blame game begins, okay? How did this happen? Right. Who's really at fault? We'll examine all of this as we work our way through the show. But before we take our first break, let's go to what happened now this afternoon. Uh, at 145, El Presidente and CEO Mark Murphy, along with Brian Gutekunst, uh, at the head table in the media auditorium, held the news conference. Uh, many of these stations carried it live. But in case you missed it, uh, here's what Mark Murphy had to say to open up his press conference about the decision. Obviously, this has been... Uh difficult couple of days and uh, you know, I, it's kind of the worst part of our business but uh, it's, it was a difficult decision to, to make the coaching change. I wanted to, to first just talk a little bit about Mike uh, McCarthy. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously he's a tremendous coach for us. Had a uh, great run here. You know, I think people are aware obviously 13 years kind of unheard of in uh, today's NFL, uh, making the playoffs nine, nine years, uh, nine times, uh, eight years in a row, uh, Packers record, and obviously the Super Bowl win uh, was the highlight. And he's also a great man. And uh, that makes it even more difficult uh, to make a decision like this. But, you know, in evaluating the season, um, I, I really felt that change was needed and, um, Kind of Mike's tenure had run its course. Um, I think we we needed a, a new voice, and um, it, you know the, it happens in our league. Not very often in season. It happens six games into an NHL season or NBA season. Fred yeah. Hoiberg was fired by the Bulls today. You know, and they played, what, 25, 30 games. Uh, but not in the NFL. Rarely does a head coach get the ax with time left on the deal. So... General Manager Brian Gunacutz, uh, with uh, his reaction, said, uh, you know, yesterday's game was just such a huge letdown. You know, I think, uh, obviously, you know, we've had um, certain expectations and standards around here for, for a long time. Uh, we certainly had them coming into the season. Um, they haven't been met. Um, I think, uh, you know, to come out at, at home uh, in this particular situation uh, against a team that we felt we should, you know, we should beat, um, it just wasn't uh, it wasn't up to our standard, and it uh, wasn't acceptable for what we what, what we want around here. Brian, did you believe that 
cracks in the foundation were beyond repair? I wouldn't term it like that, cracks in the foundation. I think the foundation this organization is very, very strong. Uh, I think there's um, a lot of positive things moving forward. Again, you know, each season, you know, stands on its own. We had expectations this year. Um, they weren't met. I don't think we've played well most of the season. Um, and I think uh, yesterday was just one of those moments where it was, uh, you know, we were looking forward where we're going, and uh, it wasn't, uh, the things weren't changing that needed to be changed. Uh, I will, but Brian will be actively involved. And, you know, obviously made the decision last night, but uh, we'll put together a committee and we'll uh, move forward. All right. So as you heard, Murphy did the firing. Murphy will have the final say on the hiring right. with input from Gutenkunst. This structure thing has me nervous, okay? Are the 1980s back in our future where the executive committee and the president made the decisions to hire and fire, and it spiraled downward. Bart Starr was recruited to take over this program mm -hmm. after uh, Dan Devine's departure, uh, and uh, that lasted nine years, a long tenure at that time. Uh, and he was fired, and there was an immediate push by some of the executive committee to bring in Forrest Gregg. Others did not want another Packer tie to come in and try and rescue this thing, and that caused a rift at the top of the organization that never healed uh, and was problematic and uh, in the midst of labor troubles in the NFL it led Greg to just bolt back for SMU after four years and her Lindy Infante for four years Blech. Uh, you know, and it was a revolving door right. of spiraling downward and to think that this is going to be a quick fix hire where the Packers are going to jump right back into Super Bowl contender status next year I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to happen. This yeah. team is devoid of impact playmaking talent thanks to the recent drafts, the sidelines approach in free agency, and just the lack of development on some young players. And that falls on the football operations division. It seems to me they fired McCarthy four games early and probably reassigned Ted Thompson three years too late. I think everyone is looking at Ted Thompson, yeah, in those last three drafts, and now looking at it with hindsight and saying, maybe we should have bailed on this You always say, earlier. yeah, let's wait three years on the draft. Yeah. Well, we waited three years on this draft, and they got nothing. Right. They had over, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, they have over 30 picks in those drafts, and there's three guys on the roster, I think. that. Yeah, and, uh, and Murphy said, uh, with... Kudakun says your GM, he really likes the draft from this year and believes if they can make the right impact head coach move and another draft from Kudakun and a free agency cycle, okay. that there is no reason why they can't get back I'll into, give you a reason into why. contention. I'll give you a reason why. They've got tons of cap money lined oh, up sure. on Rodgers. They have, they've spent money unwisely on Randall Cobb and Nick Perry. Yeah. They're not getting anything out of those two guys. Uh, and then the money they didn't spend to keep guys that would be very valuable in a yep. season where in every season you have injury at wide receiver. Geronimo Allison, Cobb missing all this time. Jordy Nelson's in Oakland. I'm not saying, you know, I was fine with making the move, but now in hindsight that looks like they really could have used Jordy and probably Aaron could have on the whole chemistry thing in the passing game because you're relying on two rookies who don't know what they're doing yet. They have talent, yes, but they don't know what they're doing. And in the secondary, they could have kept Micah Hyde, could have kept Casey Hayward. They tried drafting DBs by two by two for those last few sure. years, and none of them have panned out. Uh, and now they're playing with Equimini, uh, no, Equimini, Ibrahim Campbell, Tony Brown, Eddie Unpleasant with his drop pick yesterday. These are the guys that are on the field trying to rescue a season? Yeah. Are you kidding me? But This is a talent drought that sure. is going to set back the Packers not just one rebuilding year with a new head coach and a lot of energy, but we're talking two, three, maybe four years in a row. And Z, and if it doesn't work out, and Rodgers is now 39, mm -hmm. you got to find, you got to hit the mother load on a Hall of Fame first ballot quarterback for the third time in a row. That is not going to happen. But for the longest time, everyone covering this team didn't care that there was a lack of talent in other positions. Because you had the best because, talent yes, at the most important position. Because you had Aaron Rodgers. So everyone overlooked everything that was going on behind the scenes. And now that Aaron Rodgers isn't at his peak performance and is missing throws, 
it's becoming more and more obvious that there has been these shortcomings. But this isn't the first season that there's been shortcomings at multiple positions. Rogers it's is, just everyone chose. Rogers and McCarthy have been yeah, able to everyone chose rally to look the past and get it done. And now they're, it seems like we're no longer going to look past this. We're going Good to address Lord. it. Look so let's picks. let's see what happens. Derek Sherrod, Alex Green. Good Lord. Jarrell Worthy. My goodness. Dayton Jones. Eddie Lacy, that fat eating running back. Uh, you know, <laughs> ha ha Clinton Dix, who's not playing well in Washington. Right, right. Demarius Randall, Quentin Rollins, Montgomery. Good Lord. That should be the core of your team, oh, yeah. all on second contracts that should be, if you hit on even 10% of them, a couple of Pro Bowlers. Not happen. All right. So the hire's got to be extremely huge. Yes. And it's going to be Murphy making the call. But he said, as you heard, that Gutenkus will be actively involved. And he should be. Big time. He should be making the call. I, and I, under, I understand your point. But, but Goody is going to have a lot of say in this. Yes, he will. He will. Now, but wouldn't you think uh, that the next candidate has to be closely aligned with your general manager? This was a question that was posed to Mark Murphy, and you'll hear his answer. And that'll wrap up here segment number one. The structure now being called into question. You would think that, but there are also a lot of candidates who would rather report to a president or an owner uh, than the general manager. And the structure, again, you're focused on the structure. The most important thing is the people and the relationships. And, you know, Brian have a great, and I have a great relationship. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to – we'll be in good shape, and I'm confident we'll be able to hire an excellent coach. And I, think, I, think, I think the one thing to answer part of your question, too, is this, this is going to be an attractive job. I mean, this is the Green Bay Packers. This is one of the cornerstones of the National Football League with a quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback. So – I think going forward, I don't think that, uh, that you know there's anything here that would, would should hesitate any coach from considering this job. Yeah, we have history and tradition. Uh, you know the resources that we have available for coaches. Um, it's an attractive job. Mark, is there a personal desire on your part to be the guy that picks the coach? <coughs> no, I I want to do what's best for the organization. Why is it better for you to hire the coach than have Brian hire the coach? That's my question. Uh, Why are you? I don't want to brag about myself, but <laughs> um, I've been, all of my adult life, I've been in, involved in football. I've seen it from the perspective of a player. I've been an athletic director for 17 years. I've hired many, many coaches, um, several football coaches. Um, and so I think I have a lot to offer. Uh, I feel that I'm a football person, even though I'm on the, in a position of president, and Brian and I have a great relationship, and I think this gives the Packers the best chance to have success, and, and that's why I'm doing it. That last question is why he feels he is more qualified than Gutekunst to make this call. So, yeah, all well and, and good. Let's, but, <laughs> but let's see how the process plays out, right? I mean, we haven't seen this before with this particular. I mean, we've seen it, but not with these players involved, True. with Murphy and Goody, with this structure, let's see how they handle the, the hiring process and let's see what the head coach well, is to this organization. They made the structure change in January and yeah. the team's 4-7-1 and one out of the playoffs but is and that looking the for a head coach. But is that the structure be? or the GM before and the lack of talent Possibly. he gave Time this current tell. team? Let's see what happens. Boy, this is going to be a big and hire. And if it's Pat Fitzgerald of Northwestern, where he was former university president or athletic director, <laughs> I'm going to go crazy. But anyway, Who knows? Anyways. And, and let's see also, as part of the process, Murphy said Goody's going to have a lot of input. He's not going to select someone that the GM is not comfortable with, and that just makes sense. But then they were also asked about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, we'll get to and, him. And will he have say in who the next head coach is? And Murphy if said he, no, if he, he won't. No. But he also said we will welcome his input. Which means, of course, he's going to have a say in who the next head coach is. Now, he's not if officially... If Rodgers has a say in the next head yeah. coach, this franchise is doomed. But of course he does. Of course he does, because he's the most attractive piece of the puzzle. He will only have a, a say coach. once that coach is here um... on how you are going to run my offense. And it, does a head coach want to come into that situation where he maybe doesn't have as much authority as he would like? He's going to have authority to coach this football team and install his system and hire his assistants. Is it his football team? Well, that's the million-dollar question. Well, in Rogers' it, it case, the $129 million right? dollar question. It I should suppose. be. 
It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Very touchy situation with a alpha male QB and a brand new head coach. We're just getting started. We got to take a break already running late. And when we come back, what's that? Come on. The cat calls are coming. <laughs> when we come back, we'll hear from, well, the next head coach for the month of December from the Packers. Gentlemen, Joe Philbin, when we come back to the fifth quarter, we're live from the stadium view. Still things going on here in this month of December. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, time to drink, Packers fans, right? Yes. Double bubble here. Sundays, six to close. Mondays. Drown those sorrows. Open to close Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 7. And bring a toy on December 12th for Singo, their big Singo nice. toy drive. Good idea. Singo from 6 to 9, tis the season. Make sure you take part in that. And our Robinson's friends have brought us another six-pack of tickets to the Falcon game, and you'll have plenty of elbow room, judging from the crowd yesterday. Yep. So we'll give those away before right. we're done some folks here in the audience. Don't go away. Fifth quarter returns right after this timeout. We now return you to the fifth quarter, live from the Stadium View Bar and Grill. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right. Well, we got through the game. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Got through the game. We got through uh, the uh, the uh, front office part of the uh, program, but we still got a ways to go. So uh, plenty more to uh, hear and discuss. But we got to get to our fun and games department. And the hot and cold play of the day is back for just a couple of more opportunities to get qualified for the indoor club seats at the end of the season for that Lion finale. And uh, you'll also take home a prize tonight from our friends at Robinson's if you can guess the hot play of the day. Dave. He's over there with the mic. Who we got in the guest? We got Tom. Tom, what do you think? Devontae Adams touched him. Hey, Tommy, you're right. The hot play warmed up the crowd in the second quarter as the Packers grabbed the lead. Rodgers in the shotgun. He's got Jones to his right. Three receivers left. Single receiver to the right. Randall Cobb. Press coverage, Arizona. One safety high. Snap to Rodgers looking around. Direct. Lost. Left side of the end zone. Devontae. Two feet in bounds at the back part of the end zone. Touchdown. There you go. Wayne Larry with, well, one of the good calls of the day. Devontae Adams. Great decision to go for it. Great catch. Yes. Yep. I was a little concerned, you know, that they weren't going to take the points, but they made the play. Yep. And Devontae with a fantastic catch. He's been brilliant this season for the Packers. No question about it. Pro bowler for sure. Tom. Yeah. yeah. All right. Pro we'll bowler do the cold sure. play a little bit later on on a cold day. Take your pick. But uh, we'll get a winner for that one, I am sure, straight away. This is the second go-round for Joe Philbin on the Green Bay Packers staff. He was originally brought on board by Mike Sherman, you'll recall, in 2003 and was retained by Mike McCarthy when he arrived in 2006, became his old line coach, and then later rose to offensive coordinator, where in 2011, the year after they won the Super Bowl, Packers put up just sick numbers in that 15-1 regular season. But then tragedy struck. Joe lost his son in that accident in Oshkosh. And the Packers fell to the Giants in the playoffs that same week. And Joe departed. And I don't know, if you get a chance, Rob Domofsky, my colleague on Cover 2 with ESPN, uh, wrote a great piece. He got to, to speak with the Philbin family about coming back to what he feels is a warm, welcoming place. Uh, after all that tragedy uh, several years later. Went to Miami as head coach. Uh, that didn't end very well in three years. Uh, went to Indianapolis and worked in the O-line, but McCarthy brought him back this year to help out again as coordinator. And now it is Philbin who will be the interim head coach to take over for the final four weeks of the season. Joe met reporters this afternoon after the Murphy Gutekunz press conference and said, Man, it's been an emotional 24 hours involving one of my best friends. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, obviously it was a disappointing result for the ball game. You know, I thought we had a good week of preparation. Um, you know, when you score 17 points and you're the offensive coordinator, you're not uh, particularly happy about that part of the ball game. And, you know, so uh, I was in the locker room and just, you know, check with all the players after the game like I always do. Um, and then, you know, uh, Brian grabbed me and said that they, you know, Mark wanted to see me, and so went up to my office, and um, you know, then visited with that, uh, Mark, and you know, then talked, uh, you know, talked to Mike, and um, you know, and it's been tough, and I haven't slept very much. Um, you know, you come back here, and you, you know, you want to be part of the solution. You want to help a guy that uh, <clears throat> be a great uh, man. He's been a great coach. He's been a uh, friend and uh, you know you feel like you let him down um, so it's uh, yeah it's been busy uh, it's been 
Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, I told the team, you know, uh, he's, I mean, what he's done here speaks up for itself. And, uh, you know, I know how he feels, you know, and uh, I've been through it. It's not, it's not fun. Given your relationship with Mike, did you have any reservations about who to place on the team? No, not really. I mean, I've, I've talked to Mike twice and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, an empl- I'm a member of the Green Bay Packers coaching staff and, um, you know, I care about this organization. I love this organization. And, um, this is the role I'm in right now, and uh, I'm going to do the role to the best of my ability. Joe, what do you think you can do to kind of help get this thing turned around right now? Yeah, I mean, I told the players, look, you know, uh, I put the number 13 on the screen, a big, big screen, and I said, look, all, you know, we got uh, one thing to think about, and that's our 13th game against the Atlanta Falcons, a good football team, Atlanta coming to Lambeau Field at 12 o'clock. And, you know, we, we got to do things 35. better. We all have of us, time you know? to get to that. And, uh, we'll have another break. And I told them, you know, number one uh, but we'll responsibility you have is to be a professional, period. Uh, we all have a job to do. We all have to do it better. Um, players and coaches, I said, it wasn't just, it wasn't all on them. Uh, it wasn't all on us. And, um, you know, we're not going to make, you know, sweeping structural changes and those type of things. There's, you know, it's not like we're going to fly some magic players or magic coaches in here. In the next so four weeks, 30. we've got a good group of men. We've got a good staff. Uh, we have to get these guys to, to play better. We got to make some plays. You know, we we have to help each other out and play more complimentary football. You know, it just doesn't seem like we just haven't had that a uh, lot of momentum that's sustained itself over a period of time. And you know, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg. You know, you know, you're not making plays, so you guys, you guys are. You know, there's not a ton of energy. There's not a ton of juice. You know, sometimes. And, but what starts that? You know, it's uh, it's a little bit of the approach, a little bit of the mindset. So, um, you know, we have to play sounder, better football. We got to step up and make some plays. Just make some plays. I really like Joe. I've always liked Joe. I think he's a steadying guy. I think he's a good choice here versus Mike Pettin, brand new to the organization. Yeah. Uh, and, and that sort of thing to kind of just carry this thing to the finish line and see what happens. Although Murphy did say, uh, you know, they want to watch Joe very closely on how he handles himself. They think he could be a legitimate candidate to be the successor to Mike McCarthy. Yeah, we'll see how the team responds. And it'll be interesting to see the offensive play calling from Joe Phil. Joe is going to handle the play because call. Mike McCarthy was doing that and there's now even more reports from Albert Breer of Monday Morning Quarterback saying that Aaron Rodgers would often change the calls that McCarthy would send in now he had the go-ahead to do that but especially this year Rodgers was doing it more often than he ever had before and there was a coach that talked to Albert Breer and said it sort of became a I know better than you. I can pick a better play than you. So when McCarthy would send in the same play three times in a game, it would never get run. Rodgers would call his own stuff. Is he going to do that with Philbin, or is Philbin going to be able to get into a rhythm? Because the complaint was McCarthy could never get into a flow of the game because Rodgers wasn't calling what McCarthy wanted. I think that's a bit overblown. It could be. I don't believe, and I've talked to Aaron about that, and he says, yeah, for the most part, I'll run. Very, not nearly as often as Breer might suggest, or that coach he talked right. to suggests, that Rodgers gets it, you know, he puts on his helmet, and he hears the play call, and just turns to, screw that. You know, I don't think that's going on. He did mention lot. several times, especially in Buffalo, how disappointed he was with the game plan. He mentioned that several times in press conferences. Here's some, I think Seneca Rogers, Wallace came out today yeah. and said similar things. Yeah, but again, he also softened it, saying it was just part of the normal process. Sure. It wasn't over the top or constant, okay? It was a play here and play there, but that's two strong willed guys. The thing that's seems to me with Rodgers is he is a perfectionist as we know okay and I think he has been trying way too hard to make the perfect play with a cast that is imperfect okay Uh, you talk about his extending plays and all this sort of thing he's not scrambling just to you know scramble there's protection issues sure up front, yeah okay there have been yesterday they lost Balaga they lost by Byron Bell the whole right side of the line is gone and there's issues it's uh you know Chandler Jones over there coming at him so that was a problem uh but uh the young guys are just not disciplined enough in the scramble drill as you would prefer uh to to function at a at a high level that being said 
There have just been way too many throws that Rodgers has made that are the most head-scratching, turf-skipping, sailing throws that I've ever seen him make. And I'm wondering if it's because of the knee injury and the lack of practice time through September and October that his fundamentals have gone south and he has pretty much it's gotten away from him. The mechanics have gotten away from him. Just trying to do it on arm talent alone, flinging it here, backfooting it there, and it's the accuracy has suffered as a result. Could be. Yeah, I mean, there could be more to do with that knee than what we'll ever know, or maybe there's something else bothering him that we don't know. Could just be that this is an off year, and yes. it's just he's trying maybe a little bit too hard, and it's just not working like it has in years past. So we'll We're see. used to seeing him not miss, right? And this year, he's missing guys. It happens. It's the problem of excellence, okay? The bar is set so high yes. that when it is just a tad below, every other statistical number for Rodgers, I wrote about this last week, is right. His touchdowns are down a little bit, but it's 21 to 1 TDs to pick. Yeah, he's not Finally. turning it over. He's not turning it over. He broke Bart Starr's franchise record for most attempts without interception yesterday. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, but, yeah, the completion percentage is down, and the halt. Offense is dysfunctional on third downs and red zones. Situational football has completely failed them, and it obviously failed them to the point that Mike McCarthy got the ax. We're going to hear from Aaron Rodgers and what he had to say today in the locker room. Very interesting stuff from the quarterback. Don't go away. Fifth quarter returns to the stadium view after this timeout. We now return you to the fifth quarter, live from the stadium view bar and grill. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right, welcome back, everybody. Yes, the coldest day of Mike McCarthy's uh, <laughs> coaching life, I think, yesterday for the Packers. Let's find a cold play of the day from that loss to the Cardinals at Lambeau. You know how it works. Friends from Robinson's give you a prize tonight, and you're qualified for the grand prize. We'll be giving away in, really, a couple of weeks from tonight, right? Now, well, three weeks from tonight, I believe it will be. All right, let's see if we can get a winner right out of the gate. We have Norm. Norm. The missed field goal at the end of the game. Missed field goal, eh, 49 yards, windy day. Yeah, I think the Packers lost the game way before Mason lost the game. I don't think Mason lost the game. Would have no. helped save the game, but no, that's not it. Ready? Yeah. How about that? Third and 23. How about it? How about <laughs> it? That's a winner. I was in Philadelphia for that fourth and 26 play. Holy cow. Remember that one, folks? 15 years ago. And yesterday it was third and 23, but we got to back up. One snap, went on second and 18 from the Cardinals 17. Josh Rosen was flushed out of the pocket, missed his target badly, and Eddie Pleasant had a most unpleasant moment. Obviously everybody know what it was. Catch that pass, we win the game, so, you know, I feel like that's on me. Yeah, Eddie, catch the damn ball. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of drops yesterday. So after a delay, a game penalty. Now it's third and 23. From the 12, it's late. You're going to get great field position. You're going to win the game, right? And again, they flushed Rosen out of the pocket. And again, he was on the move, but this time ready to make a better throw. Uh, as I was scrambling, I, I saw it was Larry, and I was like, if anyone's going to catch this thing, might as well chuck it up for him. Might as well, Larry Fitzgerald again. Remember overtime in Arizona, folks? Yeah, and what did Tremont Williams see in that Fitzgerald fingertip grab? I saw a legend making a legendary catch for them to win the game, pretty much. That's what I saw with that one there. He's a hell of a player. Uh, that was a hell of a catch. Yes, it was. That was a great catch. Even after that, then they just pounded David Johnson for the go-ahead yep. field goal. It just looked like the guy said, the hell with this. It really did to me, that whole game. Like, they're not with it. It's over. Uh, it's almost like, you know, they wanted to get the coach fired. Well, they did, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a lot of conjecture in this town and around the country in particular that the guy who wanted him fired most happens to wear number 12. Yeah, and you're going to see more and more of those reports. Happy birthday, Aaron. Did you Especially get the present you were players. secretly wanting for? I'm not sure, but Aaron uh, has... Uh, the thing about Aaron is that McCarthy has steadfastly backed up Aaron all through everything that's happened. I've never really heard Aaron just come out and say, I love the guy. I got his back. Yeah. You know, he's just... Not that way, but Rogers talked today outside outside his locker, and I do appreciate him doing this. I didn't think he would, to tell you the truth, even with a big media contingent in town today. Thought he might put it off until Wednesday, but no, he got together, and here was his session with the media, at least the start of it. Listen up. Yeah, it's an odd day for sure. Um, 
I'm the only one in this locker room who was around in 05 uh, when Mike Sherman was let go at the end of the season. And it's a, you know it's a weird day. It's a tough day. Um, obviously, the emotions of uh, a frustrating defeat at home, um, game we expected to win, and then getting the news uh, later on last night. Uh, you know, it was uh, definitely tough. Did how do you, you have an idea yesterday that when he spoke to this last that that might be it for Mike? And, and how did you find it? No, not at all. I mean, I found out. I'm sure the same way that most of you found out. Um, I was at home, you know, with my folks in town uh, for my birthday and, and then found out I was, uh, you know, as, as shocked as uh, as many of you were, I'm sure. Have you had a chance to talk to Mike? And if so, what have you got to talk about? I haven't yet, but I'm, I'm going to reach out here once I'm done with my obligations today. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's tough. We spend that much time together for so many years and we have a close working relationship and a close friendship off the field. Um, it's tough. You know, I know, I'm sure he's going through the, the grieving process as, as many of us uh, who've known him for a long time and, and work with him uh, are as well. Can you, you work with Mike for closely for so many years. Can you let us inside that room and what it's like being around him, the things that we don't know about him that have been so awesome to work with? Well, the frustrating thing, you know, I think this year as much as any other year is, is uh, you know, some of the stuff that came out about him and I's relationship. Um, and as I told you, you all here many times on Wednesdays, um, you know, we've met more this year than, than any other year. Spent a lot of time on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturdays. And, you know, a lot of that is about the game plan and about the stuff that we like or don't like. But a lot of that's just talking about life. And uh, those are the conversations that I really enjoy with Mike over the years. And we started doing that a lot in, uh, in 2010. You know, Thursday afternoon was our time. And we spend, you know, anywhere from 90 minutes to four hours. Um, you know, some about football, but a lot about life and lessons and uh, thoughts and dreams and um, you know, I really always appreciate that time with Mike, uh, getting to know him on a personal level. And as much as, you know, was made, uh, conjectured about uh, him and I's relationship, you know, it was always uh, built on mutual respect and, and communication. And um, that's why this is, a you know, a different day for myself and, and the guys in the locker room. Was there a fracturing in your relationship as the years went on? And do you feel that that is any reason why Mike is not here anymore? Uh, you know, I don't, uh, you know, I, I hope that's not the reason. Um, I think him and I, like any relationship, we have our amazing times. We have our times where we butt heads. But um, the basis, like I said, was built on mutual respect and communication. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time um, here talking off the field at my house or his house, spending time together and growing in our friendship. And uh, we accomplished a lot together. I mean, we've had some incredible moments just personally. You know, the things that uh, I'm, I'm you know, always think about and appreciative of are the way that he stood by myself in 2008 during the tough changeover, the great times, obviously, you know, winning Super Bowl together, going on a run in 2009 after being 4-4 four and four at the halfway mark, obviously what we did in, in 12 after a slow start and 16 being 4-6, and six, and a lot of people calling for his head then and running the table all the way to the NFC Championship game. I and mean, we accomplished a lot of things together and um, have a lot of great memories to to talk about down the line. Would you like any input going forward with the new head coach? Those are decisions that will that'll happen down the line. And, and right now, I'm just focused on uh, these next four games and, and the direction we're going with Joe. Um, you know, I'm a, obviously an older player in the league. I still have a number of years on my contract. I'd love to still play to 40. And, uh, you know, would you know, I think there's, there's the, an interest on who the next guy would be. But, um, you know, Mark and, and Brian and I have always had, um, you know, good lines of communication. Um, their, their offices, like they say, are always open. And I've had conversations with them like I've had with, with Ted over the years. And um, I'm not, you know, needing to be involved in that process. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, we'll see. Let's hope so. But interesting stuff. Mutual respect is how he placed the relationship. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't imagine him saying much of anything differently today. No. I mean, you weren't really going to get any sort of, oh, yeah, yeah we hated each ooh, other down the stretch. Yeah. You weren't going to hear any and of that And I don't think stuff. they did. No, uh, I don't think they did either. But it was two either. very strong-willed guys. So we'll see what happens with Rodgers moving forward. we got to take another break. We'll have one more stop in the locker room if we have time, but we're getting tight. We'll finish up in a moment. Fifth quarter returns to the Stadium View right after this.
All right, I've been blowing off too much steam about this whole day today. <laughs> we run behind a little bit, but we'll have some more player reaction for you tomorrow. Hey, we don't want to end on a tower. No, we want to send somebody to the Packer game. Robinson's with a four-pack to the Falcon game. Who's going? Jerry Newthall. Jerry, way to go. You're winner only number one. we got to take one more break, and when we come <laughs> back, we'll give out another pair and set the stage for the final month with a whole new Packer team. Don't go away. We'll say so long right after this break. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's going to be a crazy month. Uh, Mark Murphy has got to hire the next coach. A quick survey here now, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think of Jim Harbaugh? What do you think of Josh McDaniels? How about Zach Taylor, Mike Sherman's son-in-law? Who? Pat Fitzgerald of Northwestern. Lincoln Riley of Oklahoma. All right. John DiFilippo. Vikes or offensive coordinator? <laughs> All right, nobody from Minnesota. Papa John right? from Papa John Pizza. Hey! It's settled. Better ingredients, better football team. <laughs> Two more tickets to the Atlanta Falcon game. Thanks, Robinson, for bringing out some extras tonight. We got some more door prizes to give away. Stick with us all week. I'll have coverage of every, all the nonsense going up the, on up the street, and uh, we'll get you ready for uh, the Final Four coming up. Who do we got? Kyle McKee. Kyle, going to the ball game. Congratulations. Appreciate you guys hanging around tonight. Next week, running back Jamal Williams will be in the house, so make sure you stick around for that one. We'll see you then. So long, everybody. Unless they fire another coach, ah, and then who true. knows?